What Thank is going you. on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm sitting here with a very talented person. Now, me and Nicole, this is Nicole, by the way. She worked uh, as one of the tethered in the Us maze, which if you guys didn't go to Us at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood, you probably missed out on a great performance by Nicole. And you probably missed out on a really good maze on top of that. But we're sitting here. We're going to talk a little bit about the Us maze. Um, I just met Nicole about a month ago. Uh, I, I, I was introduced to her work. I mean, obviously, I, I, I had probably seen her in the maze. Um, I never know who's who because they really do a great job of bringing this movie to life. So I, I'm always just amazed about everyone's performance, uh, the set pieces, everything. So uh, that's how you know everyone at that place is doing their job because if they can really immerse you into this film, it is phenomenal. And they did that with this maze, uh, us, this last year in 2019. Fell in love with it. If Sammy was here, he would tell you the same thing. That was his favorite maze of the event. Favorite movie still to this day, I think. Uh, but Nicole, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no oh my problem. Gosh. It was, I was so happy to have you reach out to me. This is actually my first podcast I've ever oh, done. Oh, okay. Yeah. I feel and I'm so that. happy it's a horror. <laughs> it gets me excited. As you can tell, I even repped my Maximus 2019 yep. horror night shirt. I had to do it. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, thanks so much for accepting the invitation. We we love interviewing um, the very talented people who work these events and bring our nightmares to life every year. Um, it, it's such an honor that I get to just talk and sit and, and get into the minds of what it takes to prep for this and opening night all the way to closing night and then post um, event. It, it, I just love getting in the minds of people to, to see what their reactions were. So thanks for joining. Of course, thank you. Um, it was it was just it was an experience. It was so right. much fun. So I actually first heard about Horror Nights when I went to Orlando a couple of years ago. Okay. I think it was the 2015 Horror Nights. It's the first time I ever had the experience with it at all. I even knew about it. My brother took me to Un Universal Orlando, right. and I fell in love. I thought it was amazing <laughs> how immersive you just everything about it, just the details the, from the moment you walk in. There was just zombies coming at you, and oh, I just okay. I loved it. Yeah, I think it was one of the years. The where Walking Dead. Yep, right. it was very big. Yep, and it was just my brother's not really a big horror person, but I've been a big horror person ever since I was little, um, and I love films. So it's definitely one of the big things I want to create are horror films myself. Oh, nice! So, I'm with you on that boat. Hey, I'm yeah. trying to become I the my passion in life is to be a filmmaker. There's so many inspirational people. I share a birthday with Alfred Hitchcock, so that must mean something. Oh, my gosh. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. That's awesome. Um, oh, I love Alfred Hitchcock. A lot of his earlier films. Oh, are he is, like, the uh, original, like, OG, like, in the 60s, 50s, thir or 60s, 50s, 70s era, he was, it was all him. Okay, yeah, The Rope is one of my favorite. I'm a huge, I mean... Obviously, it's the, the 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 one everyone knows, but I I no matter what I love Psycho. Psycho is just, it's so iconic, love it. Um, yes. so us, you got in the opportunity to play in this play a role into this maze. Um, had you had seen the film before? You had mentioned you were a big horror fan, so uh, have you had seen the movie before? And when you got casted in, were you super excited to help bring this one to life? Yeah, I have definitely seen the film before. Um. I, it was just, it's just phenomenal. Jordan Peele himself is just, he's created a whole new genre of horror. Um, right. It's incredible. Um, but yeah, it's, so when I moved to California about a year ago, this was like one of my first big things I got. I just was like, saw the casting call and I'm like, you know what? Let's try it. I right. love the, I love Universal Horror Nights. Let's, let's see. And I got it as my a first year scare actor. And yeah, they just kind of tell you on orientation what maze you're in. And they were like, yeah, you're in the Jordan Peele's Us. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Like, I was just like, like, I'm so, I was so new to everything and the whole experience. And, you know, I met so many people already who were there multiple years beforehand. Right. And as a first year, it was just, I am so thankful that I had the opportunity, especially to do Us. Right. Um, it's, this maze was just so different as I, I learned from everyone else's experience because Jordan Peele really much wanted to be involved. Right. 
yeah, he told, I think he just was want, told Universal, like, if we were to do it, they wanted, he really wanted to be involved. So he really had to, like, help pick everyone to be in it, which helped us feel a little special right. <laughs> when we were trying. That, that was just really cool just to hear about all of that and how much he wanted to be involved. Um, we even had, I think we had, normally you only have one rehearsal day mm -hmm. with everyone. Um, we had three. Wow. Yeah, we had three. And it was like, I, you could tell it was kind of like a new thing for everyone. Right. Even like the whole like supervisor team and everything like that. All just so lovely. That so sounds lovely amazing i mean the fact i i didn't realize how much jordan pill was involved with this i mean i know it's his movie and everything but that kind of makes me really happy when you know i mean you hear stories i know john murdy um i love i love john murdy and chris williams the people who design these events every single year and i hear a lot of stories of like uh, for example, I know last year Creep Show was a big property at the event too, and they worked really well with Greg Nicotero to get like a lot of the actual sculpts they use in the show for like the masks and stuff. Um, so it's really cool to hear uh, Jordan Peele actually really wanted to be involved with this one. I mean, the guy he's really he came from a show Key and Peele, which was a hilarious Comedy Central show. Hilarious. It, yeah, it's hilarious. You're right. <laughs> it, it was like a modern day kind of uh, Chappelle show. Mm -hmm. where they just did a bunch of skits and everything. And then, you know, when I found out he was going into the horror world, I was like, this is going to be very interesting. I'm curious to see. He released Get Out. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind. I was, I didn't know what to think. Exactly. It was just something so new. And you're like, wait, like, this is a horror film. Yeah. Like, this is, it's everything you want and more because it was just so different, so new right. that it just hasn't been done before. And then he <laughs> was like saying that he had so much more in the pile and then right. all of a sudden us comes out and just, just whoa yeah us came out and I, that like I, I after get out i was like how are you gonna step it up from there and then us came out and i was legit messed up after i watched that film because i was i had really started thinking like oh what if this is like a real thing though <laughs> Yeah. Like, it, I mean, the guy is doing so much. Like, now he's really getting into the producing game. He hosts the new uh, readaptation of The Twilight Zone, uh, which I think is freaking phenomenal. I, I'm a huge Twilight Zone fan from the classic series, but to see Jordan Peele come back and, and revive that show and, and kind of give it a more modern take on things with more, you know, modern CGI or special effects and everything, it's a beautiful show, and I, and I love it. Uh, he just premiered on HBO, uh, what is it, Lovecraft uh, Country? Yeah, I yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't even watched it yet. Yeah, he was producer on that with J.J. Uh, Abrams. And from what my dad is telling me, it starts off like all like sci-fi fantasy and then it gets really horror at one point. Uh, and it, I know I know a, a lot of the things that were hyping this up was in the trailer that you saw um, the mythology, mytholo I can't talk today, mythological creature uh, Cthulhu, um, which is like one of the seven... Um, I think it's one of the seven princes of hell, which I believe, uh, and it's just insane. There, my dad said there's a bunch of creatures in it, vampires, uh, monsters, and everything. So I'm like, you don't have to say any more. I'm hooked. <laughs> I can't believe I, I can't believe I ever heard of this yet. Or like, really, I mean, maybe I did hear. I knew he had. I try to follow him as much as I can. I knew he had. Right. He always has something new that he's working on. Um, but yeah, now now I'm hooked. Now yeah. I'm. Like, it just premiered, I think, last weekend. So it's only like an episode in. So it's okay, still awesome. relatively new. Uh, I, 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 was, I, I saw the trailer uh, when they did Comic-Con at home, and I was like, this is this looks great. And then it, I didn't know when it was going to premiere. Like, I had forgot about it. My dad's like, did you watch this yet? I'm like, no, I, I didn't know it premiered. Now I'm going to have to watch. Thank God for HBO Max. I love that thing. I think, thank God. Yes. <laughs> I know, right? I it, love it. it. It's like literally when something premieres on HBO, like the very next hour, next day, it's on HBO Max. So I'm like, I'm sold. It's great. So, um, so many good things on there. But he is just a visionary person. Now he's really getting into that world of producing. But now, like I said, when I hear that he's involved with this maze, that doesn't surprise me. And it makes me happy to think that he was involved with it. That's why this maze was as beautiful as it was. Um, not to mention, we have an ongoing joke over here in the honk community about uh, HHN and the use of black walls. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to other mazes, but, uh, I mean, surprisingly, us did a really good job of n not having any black walls this year, which I was very, very impressed with. Uh, but me and my buddy, 
we, leading up to this maze, we we kept saying uh, we want white walls, and then when we saw them in us, we kind of lost our shit. So <laughs> <laughs> it was like us was like that's why I think we had a lot of love with that maze because of the fact that it gave us the white walls, and it was just a phenomenal maze. It really brought it to life. So. I so glad you loved it so much yeah that i mean there is so sense. much to love about this maze though i mean you had that opening facade which was the um the little outdoor um funhouse wow. facade which was awesome and then they were playing um of course i got five on it which was a huge theme for the movie um and as you walk through you start you know you go f the thing i like about universal is they put you scene by scene in the movie like, they'll take a, an hour and a half, two-hour movie and sum it up in five minutes, which I love. Yeah, and they do it so, so perfectly. Like, it's it's just, it's literally like you were in the movie. It's all of the right points. And I remember the first time we went through, especially with all of my cast members as well, other scare actors, it was just, we were, we were blown away. Right. And it's like, even when we went through and we knew everything that was going to happen, it was just every single time, it was just reliving the entire thing. Right. It was... Uh, I was just astounded. It was amazing. And just being a part of something like that and seeing it come to life and also like meeting John Murdy and seeing just how he created everything. Right. Um, just, it was so cool. I'm not, so lucky. Not to mention uh, Lupita herself actually came one night to scare act in this maze. Did you ever get a chance to meet her when she did that? <laughs> No, because guess what? I was in the maze. I was currently like working right. when she, she, and what's funny is that room was right next to mine. Right. So I was in the last room. Um, hands Across America. The Hands Across America. Oh. Yep, the Hands Across America room. And so I was right next to the classroom room and she was like, she was in there while I was scaring. And right. it's like, as much as I wanted to go over, but it was so cool to know like, okay, so she's technically working with me right, right. now, right? That is awesome. <laughs> like, um, and there was like the big cameras and everything. And then actually seeing the video later on of her doing and being able to see what she was actually doing was just, was right. just amazing. Um, and also actually Jordan Peele going back to him real quick. I did scare the crap out of him. Like I did. Nice. It, it was, it was, it, he, he came the opening night. They had him come a little bit early. So again, we, they told us so many times, like extra rehearsals. We had to come in an extra early, which I didn't have a problem with, right. but um, I got to scare him and just, we were, they, I think everyone was so worried because they wanted it to be perfect for him. They wanted, because he was so involved and he wanted it to be so good. I could even see it on his face when I scared him, how excited he was, happy he was. And just his team was just telling my supervisor team. And then they told us just how, how much he loved it and just right. was shocked by everything about it. Like he was scared himself, which was that is, really That's awesome that you guys actually see and scare Jordan Pill. Like, I don't know what I would do in that moment. Like part of me knows like I'm in a role right now. I got to take this serious. But the other part of me is like, do I not, do I fanboy just a little bit? Like <laughs> this guy is like the new king of horror right now. Oh my god, I was freaking out. And it's like the whole time they're like, they're telling you, like, okay, they're coming, they're coming, but you don't know when. Right. And then people keep walking through, like team and stuff, and you're like getting ready, you're like, okay, is this him? Is this him? And it's like while you're still trying to stay in character, right. it was it was a crazy adrenaline rush and just oh, and I then when it actually was and I just saw him like get scared by me. It was it, it was awesome. It was just a wonderful memory. I, and I'm so glad that he actually made the time because I know he was really busy during right. the time, obviously. I think producing a lot of new works. Um, it was just so nice that he came out to do that. Right. Um, also, Horror Nights is, is well known for actually having celebrities just show up at nights. Um, one of the nights, me and a couple of my friends were waiting in line. I'm not really a huge sports fan, but my buddy that I brought with is a huge basketball fan. And Lonzo Ball actually walked right past us uh, and went was going for the maze. Um, that's just like one celebrity that we saw going there. Did you ever any? Did you see any other celebrities walk through your maze? I mean, there's probably a lot that show up. So many, and <laughs> you, so you've been in the maze, so you know how dark my room was. Right. Um, it was crazy how many times I would go on break after my shift, like my 45 minute shift and people would be like, did you just see so-and-so go through? And I'm like, no, but I must've scared them, but I didn't see them. <laughs> um, but I know I did see, I know like John Legend and Chrissy Teigen went through nice. um, so many, oh my God, so many she, other she actors. She must've been funny because she is very easily scared. 
<laughs> yes. So funny. Um, I saw Billie Eilish. She went through. Oh, okay. Um, one person who loved it was Ariana Grande. She nice. came, I think, four, four or five times. And she would actually walk through our back break area. Right. And so many times we, I'd be sitting there and my cast members would be like, Wait, did you just like or just walk towards the maze? And I'm like, what? No. <laughs> like, it happened to me like four times, Anthony, that I'm like, <laughs> I, I think you guys are lying because... And then every time she'd either, and then one time she actually, like her third or fourth time, because she was saying how much she loved the us people, just loved it, right. loved it so much, especially because she kept coming back. Um, she took a picture with the other cast members that weren't in the maze. So the people who were on break, you know, the switch up, she took a picture and posted it on her story. So all of my cast members were in it. So I'm like, well, at least I scared her because <laughs> I was working at the time, but I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. No, I, 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 uh, I've, I've, uh, yeah, that's the thing about, uh, and, and that's why I asked about Lupita earlier, because I know that that's not the first time that, uh, a cast member has, or, uh, an actor or someone has come and done something like that. I know that, uh, a few years back when they did The Shining, uh, James Franco actually stood in the maze at the end to play Jack Torrance with an axe, which was really cool, um, and I think I don't remember. I'm trying to remember to top of my brain. There was other couple. I know Lupita was a big one too, uh, but there is there is times where you'll see actors come and and either reprise their roles or just jump in there for the hell of it. And I think it's hilarious and, and really cool. A uh, little a little surprise if you walk through it and you're not expecting that. You know, it's like especially with Lupita, like everyone knows her for that role now, and it's like she reply reprised the tether version of herself at the end in the chalk uh, in the schoolhouse scene, which I thought was amazing, and. If I was like me being a fan, if I saw that, I, I think I would just lose my shit. Yeah, yeah. And she even told us that she was like, this is hard. <laughs> she's like, she's like, this is really hard. Um, like later on, like just telling the, the girls who were playing that part. Right. She's like, oh my God, I don't know how you guys do it. Like this is, and it was just awesome to have her just have that experience and to have her actually there. Because so many people say, oh, Lupita might come. Like she might come. And then she did. And we're all like, freaking out <laughs> it, it was awesome we also actually had the kids oh um, come through yeah i remember that i'm actually they made a little like instagram right video, like and i'm actually in that video like coming really out. yeah you got to scare <laughs> so the kids like, too that's hilarious you probably yeah, traumatized that's... them but it's all right you know they were in the movie themselves so it's all right <laughs> exactly but they, <laughs> they were scared they were like freaking out that's all of awesome. them they were they were so cute and just oh my god phenomenal actors right it, it's just i could go off on the acting in that movie oh no no i mean it's a it's a horror movie it's a horror podcast we we got time so <laughs> it's a, no i i agree i mean i am a huge also uh i'm a huge marvel fan so mm -hmm. I, I love all those movies and stuff black panther had both uh the two actors and us in there as well. And I love them in black Panther. And then when I saw they were going to be in us, I was like, I'm already sold these. I saw what they can do in black Panther. I know they're going to do great in us. And they mm -hmm. did. It was, it was, there was funny moments in that movie where the, the family was arguing, especially the one part where they're arguing about who's going to drive. And then they start adding, well, I got this many kills. And it's like, no, that's not how we're deciding who drives. It's like, um, I, I think with a movie like us though, and it was cool to see this in the maze as well. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched this too, this is going to be a little bit spoilers, but what was the biggest shock for me in that movie to find out, because they kept it so well kept of a secret in the movie, is when they go see the friends, and then you find out there's tethered versions of them. And it was just a big shock in the theater. I remember looking at my friend like, wait, what? What's going on? I'm like, there's more of them? And I, I thought it was just the family. And then when you see that scene, it's like there's more of them, and you're like, okay, so how many more are there now? Yeah. And then you start seeing like an army of them and they executed that scene so well in the maze where you're walking through the house um, and he comes out with the scissors, does the handshake. And uh, it, it, I can't say enough my, good things about this maze. So those were the guys who played um, him were two of my closest friends, too. So it was it, they did. They actually wonderful. dogged me at one time because I the first night I went through. <laughs> He did the handshake and I went for it and he did it. I'm like, okay, I'm glad at least it was me that got that, you know what I mean? Exactly, was... yeah. It was just, and 
just what astounds me throughout that movie is just how each actor literally had to play two different completely right. different characters um and just the way the tethered are are just com like a completely different race pretty much like they just think differently they act differently and um, which actually brings me i forgot to mention the choreography that you know how the tethered walk especially um red um jordan peele actually sent out the choreographer who worked on the film to work with us that's awesome so that was that was really awesome just she just showed uh, a lot of the reds um but also all the tethered just how to move how to move how they did how literally how she taught lupita right and how they practice and that that was just that was another just amazing thing that doesn't really happen a lot with these maces it's funny because at work i uh I, when, me and my coworker, we we both love this movie, and uh, every now and then, I I actually have the tethered version of I Got Five on it on Spotify, so I, I will throw it on every now and then. And there's all for some reason every time I throw on, there's always a pair of scissors right next to me, and I'll just grab him and do the stance and look at him, and he just kind of he'll look at me and then kind of try to find something that's equivalent to scissors and do the same thing, and we just all geek out over that. Um, me every time, right? <laughs> So my brother, talking about my brother and not really liking horror films, every time, so he came in to the maze a couple times, like right. good, I think three or four times. And I would always get my friends to either like target him or like I would, and just to see, he, he did not like that. And so now <laughs> sometimes I'll be cool and I'll randomly get scissors or I'll start playing the five on it song right. in our, in our apartment. And he freaks out. He's like, stop, just stop. <laughs> I can't take it. Like, and I'll put my face on my tethered face, and yeah, he he can't handle it. If you really want to get him now, now that you know on Spotify, they have the tethered version of it. It's beautiful. Oh yes, yes. I know. That's the I that uh, that will get anyone, honestly. It's it's on my playlist. Yeah, I I listen to that. I mean, I think what they did with that song, like you would never expect in a million years for that to actually work, and it did. It worked perfect perfect yeah like yeah it was awesome it's just another just creative amazing aspect yeah, of the I, film it's just... jordan pill literally just took the songs he listened to growing up and just like i'm gonna remix them and make them creepy for you yep that's just, and, and, and it was 100 percent creeped out oh perfect. yeah <laughs> it's like now that i now that i listen to the regular version of that song it's like okay i'm expecting any time for this to switch real yep. quick and it just never does and i'm like oh wait no this is not the tethered version I think I played it every morning after Horror Nights was done because I just missed it so yeah. much. It just I heard that twenty four seven at work, and it, yeah, I needed to listen to it. I still do. That, that's another thing on. I want to talk to you about too, because I know in the beginning of the maze they play that, and in my head I'm thinking, man, the people who have to scan tickets or work out here are probably going nuts over this. Um, how does that affect you guys though? I mean, I know you guys probably don't hear it nearly as much as they did. Cause I know in each one of your mazes, they, they have a different audio cue and everything that goes off every now and then. How does, how does that, uh, um, how was that affecting on you? I mean, did you really get to hear that too much or? Yeah. Um, I mean it is, yeah, it's constantly playing, but you, you have earplugs in, right. um, because it's very loud, um, and you're in there constantly. Right. Um, you, to be honest, you get used to it. I mean, I didn't, it didn't bother me. I mean, it just becomes like, just kind of like that white noise in the back of your head. Right. Like, you know, it's there. And after, you know, when you get out, it's, it is a relief to take those earbuds out, right. those earbuds out and just be like, ah, I can hear, hear normal, normal <laughs> things again. Um, but no, it, it really didn't bother me too much. And I just, I loved it. I loved the I job. So now, you, now you I, hear it and then just get into character real quick. Exactly. I do. I do. Yeah, my yeah, my brother is very wary of when he hears that he runs, um, because he knows my character will come out. <laughs> um, so we talked a little bit about you prepping for this role and 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 everything. Opening night, that was that has to be the funnest night of your life, right? I mean, you guys are so energized. You guys are pumped. You're ready to go. You probably give a hundred and ten percent. Like, how was opening night? Explain to me the process of of the of, from getting there to get it into character to the maze finally opening opening night you guys worked so hard for this it's opening night what's it like it it was thrilling anthony it was just and this was the first time i ever was a scare actor right. um so it was just so new to me and so so thrilling like i 
So I know opening night, obviously we knew we knew it was coming um, and we got so excited. And what even made it worse was they said Jordan Peele might like 90% might be coming. So <laughs> like that added to it, <laughs> added to just the excitement and the little bit of fear. And again, just this being my first time doing it. Um, but I remember walking in and just being so excited like this is, and just seeing exactly how it works. You know, they tell you how it works and right. we didn't have actual really guests yet. Um, this actually, well, actually, depending on, because we did have like an employee preview. Right. Um, but yeah, then we actually did have opening night. Um, so we got in there, we had to walk down to Scarebase, um, which is where we all get ready. We get our costumes, um, which just also was just an amazing thing for me to just walk into work, <laughs> grab a costume, sit in the makeup chair, and right. it turned very scary. And <laughs> it was it, it was so awesome. Um, but you get prepped. You're usually there about almost between probably an hour and a half, two hours beforehand, especially on the opening night because right. of possibly Jordan Peele um, <laughs> and his team. So in just the nerves were good nerves. They were like excite, excitement, the good butterflies. Um, and I actually think, and because we have like almost like two teams, you know, because you switch off so right. you can break. Um, we didn't know who was going to go in the maze first, um, especially when Jordan Peele did. And then all of a sudden they said, my group was, because oh. you look at like, the schedule. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> of course I, was, I was so excited for just the opportunity. Right. Um, and like I said, the supervisor team was just so great getting us pumped. We'd always have a pre, um, pre-meeting just to like catch up on everything. And right. of course, first meeting was very intense and just like you got this like you're prepared like you guys had three <laughs> rehearsals <laughs> um you guys are ready um and just getting you know warming up um and also just like i say it was my first time being a scare actor so just right. having the practice of getting really close to a guest but not too close you know right. having to get that so really having to get that down to kind of get used to that and literally being inches away from someone's face. I think uh, in today's role, everyone's kind of prepped for that now. <laughs> it's uh, everyone knows their social distance now. So, yeah. Um, so beginning, you know, you have these you're you're ready. You're ready for it. You're you're feeling good. J uh, Jordan Peele walks through, scare the crap out of him. It's the, probably one of the greatest feelings ever. And then the season continues after that. Uh, what's it like towards the middle going towards the end? Like eventually, are you tired? Or do you just, is the adrenaline just, just keeps, keeps you going throughout the year? Because this was, every time I went to the event, this maze was like a two hour wait. Like this, yeah. there was never a day where I went where it wasn't under like an hour and a half, two hours. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, and like I said, just new to the whole thing. Um, yeah, when it started, your body has to get used to it. Because right. um, it's 45 minutes on and you're scaring someone like every two seconds, right. every like two to five seconds. Um, and like you, like for me, like I had to go back in my stance and then go back. So it's like, and when I went at them, it's like my whole body contracted, right. like everything, every muscle. Um, you didn't know what your body was going to do next. You were going to do some kind of, some kind of move. My body had to get used to that. Um, right. I, I was sore for a while. Um, the first, definitely probably the first two weekends were right. tiring, but I guess another t a good tired. Yeah. Um, and this, you sweat a lot. <laughs> you sweat a lot, especially during the, the beginning months, September, October were really hot. Um, yeah. and the mazes, not all of them can be air conditioned air right. conditioned they try luckily i was in the last room so i was kind of near the door which helps that's breeze coming in bit. now and everything yeah yeah but to be honest like the 45 minutes on 45 minutes off was it was good it was like just right. the right amount of time <laughs> sometimes it felt like it went by really quick other times it was like oh, when's my when's my reliever coming <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> i need a break and you need something or yeah which Again, yeah, you don't realize how many calories, how many times you're burning. Um, right. Universal does a really good job at just prepping you for that. Um, prepping, like, how to take care of your body, um, your health, like, what to eat beforehand. Because it is, it's just a constant workout for oh, yeah. eight, ten hours straight. Um, right. Yeah, it was it was great. I'm assuming the water game was just lots oh. of water. Yep, constant yep. that. 
especially when it started to get like colder, like tea, right? All of that stuff. They always had like snacks to just quickly give us those carbs. That's awesome. Burn off. Um, they would have um like some physical therapists come, and if any like muscle pains or anything, they would help us like roll it out. Nice. Um, anything that that was really nice, really awesome, and again, right. just telling us how to take care of ourselves. And yeah, health services was there if we ever had any problems. Right. Um, yeah, Universal is just really good. They they care, they care about the air actors. So, 2019 being your first year, um, sadly with 2020 around the corner, HHN has canceled this year, which is a very sad thing because I I don't know if you keep up with uh, speculations or not, but there was a lot of good talk of what was potentially coming and it looked like we finally got a confirmation that Beetlejuice was going to be one of those mazes that was going to come. Um, Universal, yeah. Universal Orlando has a tribute store for Halloween Hornets that they put out around this time every year. They just put out Beetlejuice merch on sale. So pretty much confirms that that was going to be one of the major properties to be on both coasts, uh, this year. Uh, my hopes is that, they continue to bring that back for next year because I am killing to see a Beetlejuice maze. Um, I yeah, and I would I would love to be in the Beetlejuice right? maze. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, I was I was really sad because they were, you know, they weren't sure. Obviously, all of the it's just hard to know what's happening next during this time. Right. Um, and they did like have auditions and like reached out to us and told us to apply, especially as returning scare actors. Um, right. And I yeah I was. I knew I I had a feeling I wasn't sure just because of how it turned out um, with this time if they were still gonna have it and I kind of figured when it was getting closer that they probably they haven't really said anything and I had a feeling that they'd cancel it and I I, I kind of think it's smart because of how right. close quarters you are with everyone um, I think it's smart to just save especially if they ha- having real juice save it to be even bigger and better. Right. Sure. Um, I know another big speculation was uh, you, you mentioned Billie Eilish earlier. There was talks of her getting her own property this year as well. Um, I was a little iffy about that just because I don't know how her music would fit into a maze, but I think I, I have complete faith uh, in, in the, the creative team over at Universal. They've turned some of the wackiest ideas you can ever think of into a, a solid maze. Uh, this oh, is yeah. the end, uh, that comedy movie, comedy horror movie. That was turned into a maze at one point, so it's like mm-hmm. – I, I have total faith. And a lot of people actually didn't have any faith on Ghostbusters last year. And I was calling that. I was like, this is going to be like the underdog maze of 2019. Not a lot of people have a lot of – a lot of people think, oh, it's – yeah, it's a horror movie, but it's not scary. It's funny. I'm like, I think they can pull it off, though. Yeah, and and they did. And they, it was yeah, such – it was probably another high-rated maze at the event. I, I would say that was probably like number two or number three in the high rating of, of the overall event, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, because so, yeah. that was like the maze that always opened with the early entry. And there was always a line for that, like in the middle of the night and everything. So, uh, so yeah, tw- that, that was great. I knew a lot of people who worked that maze. The and Ghostbusters. Just- yeah, and they ended up were like some people who ended up like getting into the maze a little later and they just right. they fell in love with it. Right. I loved it when I went through. Yeah, I was going to ask you that too. So I know that you guys work a lot of hours. Did you actually get to go to the event for the first time at all this year? Or? Yeah. Um. So they, they're just, like I said, Universal, just they're awesome. They really care um, about us, like the scare actors. <laughs> and um, they, they give us the opportunity. They don't really tell us when, but at some point they say, we'll give you the opportunity to be able to go during one of your breaks to go see the mazes, right. uh, the other mazes and support everyone else. Um, so I think about like the mid, the middle of the, the season, um, they kind of planned it out. They like talked to us, told us like, I think they had us do like half of them one day and half of them another day. Right. And just during our breaks, we'd have to quickly go and they'd, they'd like shuttle us over quick, especially cause I, we were on the, the tram lot. Right. Um, they had to bring us down to like the lower lot and yeah, they just quickly, they, the other supervisors would meet us and just bring us right through the maze, like to the front of the maze and let us go through and experience. And it was that, I was just so happy they did that. I just thought that that was so great to give us that experience and to see our, our other friends work and just do their thing. It was great. And it was great to see (laughs) because when they see you come through, because they know who you are, it was just, you, you, you support each other and you get so excited and it's, it's nice when you see your friends come through and 
you you can just scare you can scare the crap out of them. Oh and yeah, it's, it's that, great. That's, that's <laughs> the fun thing. I mean, uh, uh, other than us, because I bet us was probably your favorite. I mean, it was one of my favorites. What was I'm like not biased, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Us was just a fantastic maze. What other mazes did you really enjoy uh, last year? Uh, I really, really enjoyed Killer Clowns. I, um, said, yeah, I, I, I started with that. that I almost wore that shirt. I actually got that shirt from Horror Nights. Right. Um, that that was great. I really loved. I really did like Ghostbusters. You know, so many people were saying it was the underdog, but no, I, I very much enjoyed it. I was impressed. I didn't know how they were going to do it. I was really impressed by it. I was excited for Creep Show because I loved Creep Show. Creep Show was so good. Yeah, I watched um, I watched that a lot, and I, I just loved all the different rooms. Right. Uh, they they did that so well. And again, the whole just facade being, too of it being a comic book was dope. Yes. That was so cool. Yeah. Um, and it just felt so nice and long too. Right. Oh, and another one I did like Stranger Things. It was interesting. You like to Stranger see. Things? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. It I I think the other ones I just mentioned are probably a little higher on the list, right. but I really right. liked um oh, what do they call? They 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 squirt you, they squirted you with the water. The, the, the demog dogs or demogorgons. demogorgons, yeah. Yeah, those that, that was impressive. That was really right. cool, and they they that really got you and scared you. Yeah. Um, I liked that. I uh, yeah. I, if I could, I would I would have just lived in Killer Clowns because I am just I have a love for that movie um so much since I was a kid, and walking through that tent, I was just like I, I felt at home. I was mm -hmm. like I've waited so long, like twenty years, just to go through this, and it's finally happening. How many uh, times did you go through? I know it was it, it was such a, a good property. Um, I think last year's lineup was actually a very solid lineup. I mean, they had a lot of good properties last year, um, especially when they were really trying to hit it with that kind of '80s vibe as well, uh, which is a huge thing at Horror Nights. Um, Murdy put it best when he said, "You know, people in the in the '80s were hooked on the '50s, you know, and then people today are hooked on the '80s. So it's like it's it's just an ever growing thing that like." 30 years down the road, they're going to be hooked to our generation of the the way we lived and stuff that we had. So exactly. that, that, that's just amazing to think about that. Like 30 years down the road, people are going to be like, oh, man, I wish uh, I, I could do a podcast or something. You know, I don't know how big podcasts will be in 30 years. Right. Yeah, I bet you it will. I bet you it will probably be something else. But then it'll be like, yeah, you know, like, remember those old podcasts that people used to do, people would just randomly talk about everything and right. just have a discussion. Oh yeah, I bet that's, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds awesome. Like, yeah. You remember when like the Xbox two came out and now we're at like Xbox 37. It's like, geez. we're like 37 and one, but really one Xbox one is like 37. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Talk to us a little bit about the final night. Final nights are usually the hardest and the saddest. So talk to us a little bit about final nights on, the, on your maze. That was probably one of the best nights of my life. Right. Probably right. one of the top, just best, best days of my life. Um, just the energy and just, it was so, so sad to, for that to be the last day because I, I, it wasn't a job to me. It, I, I just, I wanted to go. To work every single day it was right. it was not a job to me whatsoever i, I couldn't believe i had that as a job <laughs> i know right? um, getting paid to scare I people couldn't that's believe, awesome even though some people if they needed like to take a, a break or they had a they couldn't do work a day or something i'd be like no i'm gonna if i'm like if i'm dying i'm gonna try my best <laughs> to go to work because i want to go to work right um but just everyone was just so lovely i just we had such a family uh, such a family the us family and we actually were right next to pandora's box so we oh, dude. were friends with a lot of them as well and shared yeah. a break area we knew each other and just such a big family and so and we just had such an amazing season that it was just like i can't i can't believe this is done right and just our last huddle and like big discussion oh my god there were so many cries um and just they did like little superlatives with certain people um and I got one, which was really cool. Awesome. Which was really awesome. Um, and just awesome that people like noticed my work too, um, especially being in the last room as well. Um, that was right. that was really awesome. But just the empowerment. I know my brother went through that maze on the last day like two or three times, and just having him go through and it 
everyone just, it, we were heightened. We were heightened because it was just, it was the last day we could do it. We were energized, our adrenaline. We didn't want it to end. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, I think yeah, we actually went on the best. last night too. And that I know, uh, cause we, we, we had brought the, the Thursday, Sunday pass so we can go Thursdays and Sundays. Um, and we, because the lines were always so long that we never got to go through us. I think we hit us a total of, I hit us a total of four times that season. And my buddy only got to hit it a total of twice. And that was like the mates he was really looking forward to. And on the last night he goes, I don't care what we do tonight as long as we make it a priority to hit us. And I'm like, that sounds fair because out of all the mazes we've done, that's the one we've probably done the least amount. And we should have done it even more. But I think because it was always the line. But we made it our mission that we were not leaving Horror Nights 2019 without <laughs> doing us one last time. Uh, that and Killer Clowns were the two on our priority list. And once we got that done, we didn't care what we did for the rest of the night. Um, but and you, Which is good. Yeah, I mean, I... I can't say enough about this cast and us. I mean, you guys did a great job bringing this movie to life, and that's not an easy thing to do at all. Um, it, it's rare that you see something that lives up to what the movie is. And this maze took, like I said, an hour and a half film and five minutes. They told you the story. They nailed the scenes, and the scares were just phenomenal in this maze. I mean, there was not one part in this maze where I was – disappointed like from start to finish everything i loved about this maze was in it and it was awesome um a thing that i th i think was cool about your character though is since your character was you you got to technically play the tethered version of yourself yeah that was that was really fun and just being that was that was just different in itself because it's like you know as an actor it's like developing a character a new right. character and so i did i tried to study the film um beforehand and just realize okay what would the untethered version version of me be like right um it was just that that was really cool that that was something different um and just to kind of bring to life and kind of, kind of find that dark place within you right. um to just bring out a new character um it, it was awesome and to just have the other people in my room the hands across america room and just see each other kind of develop over the season um right and just get even deeper into the character every everyone was just insanely talented and just amazing in this maze that it was i miss them all so i, much. I couldn't agree more no everyone did a really good job uh, amazing job uh, bringing this movie to life. I mean, like I said, this is not an easy thing to do. There's a lot of very talented people, and I thought it did uh, great. And I loved going through it. I loved uh, seeing what was in the in the maze from the movie. Uh, there was a lot of scenes that me and my buddy were leading up to, like, oh, we want to see this, this, and this. And, like, all those scenes were in there, and we were just in love with it. So, I mean... I don't know, Nicole. You guys did a great job. It's just, it's. It, if I could see it one last time, I would love to, especially now Thanks. more than ever. <laughs> uh, we were like, we kept saying um, at the end, we were like, okay, why don't we bring this like a, a full, a full year thing, like they did with the Walking Dead attraction right. in the park? Like, why don't we do an US one and just bring back and just be like year-round employees and just be able to <laughs> do this forever? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would love that. Or even if they brought back. Um, one thing that I missed a lot was when they used to do the House of Horrors um, at Universal Studios. If they brought back, like, a Jordan Pill, if they did something or with Jordan Pill, like a House of Horrors type Jordan Pill thing, that would be dope. Maybe they can, like, once he gets even more films out. Yeah. And it could be, yeah, just of all his different films. I know he's so. producing Candyman. He's got that uh, Lovecraft Country. He's got Twilight Zone. Uh, Us, Get Out. I mean, yeah. the guy is doing everything right now. He has in producing so many other I know. films as well. I'm just waiting until when he's going to write and direct his next one now because that's what I'm very eager to see. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to see. I'm still trying to figure out what – because he said that us and Get Out are in the same universe, but there's an Easter egg in something, and I can't figure it out, and it's, it bothers me. <laughs> I heard that as well. Yeah, I, I remember trying to discuss it with some of my cast members about that, and yeah. we're just like – we. Yeah, I, I I'm with you there. I I have no idea what the Easter egg is. I'm I'm like I want to know. My I'm only like... my only theory is that the family who was performing the surgeries 
is somewhat is has to be responsible for why there's tethered mm-hmm. because they're pretty smart if they can perform open brain surgery so they got to be they got to be responsible for for something with clones that's the only possible scenario i could think and there's probably something that's in plain sight in both movies that we're not seeing oh yeah probably he's, and it's he's like smart there probably is i i just want to know and, and jordan pill will not release it which it, it bothers me so much it's like bother me bothers me but smart right. he's like he's like i have this control <laughs> yeah. it's mine you figure it out but i will never tell um <laughs> Nicole, before we let you go today, I got to ask the hardest question probably of the entire podcast. Um, And a lot of people usually get it right off the bat or they take some time. Let's see how you do. Okay. Nicole, what is your favorite horror film? Oh, see, I knew you were going to ask me this. (laughs) Um, uh, Okay. So favorite horror I would have to say, if we're talking, it's like I can pick ones from like different like decades. The decades, <laughs> um, genres, subgenres. I okay. I, I would say the one on the top of my list right now is The Conjuring. I love right. James Wan. I really much like James Wan and all of his works. Right. Um, I would love to work with him one day. Um, I just really like The Conjuring universe. Um, and just the way he does it, because it has so many different emotions, like just right. raging from love, comedy, horror, suspense, like everything. I, I just thought it was really well done. Yeah. Um, those are, I would have to say just, it It always makes me feel a certain way when I watch it. Right. Um, and I think the second one is like very, just as well done. Um, James Wan is just amazing. Yeah. Um, it's got an right life and that movie was phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Not a horror movie, but just to show the many talents of James Wan. If he can go from horror to superhero, like, yeah, it's great. He's done done a lot of different things, too. Um, Just like Jordan Peele, especially producing different things. Um, Yeah, and I would have to say, and then Us, Us, yeah, that's on the top of the list. Because that's just phenomenal, just the way that they, everything about it. And I'm not not biased, I just think it's even before I I I don't blame you. It's just amazing the way he does every and just the acting and the way how much work that they put into it and right. just the way the whole storyline is and how it just makes your mind go crazy. Yep. I just it's it's fun. I could talk about it all day and just really digest the film in itself. Right. Um, I would have to say those are my top ones. I've got plenty of other ones slower on the list, but right. I would have to say those are my top. I, I think those are great choices. Conjuring, uh, if you ask my if, if my co-host Sammy was here, fortunately he's been uh, working very late lately, so he could not make it. But if he was here, he would tell you the nun probably scared the shit out of him uh, from Conjuring too. To this day, he is terrified of the nun. Yeah, um, that yeah, if, that if image I, just came through my mind right now. <laughs> listen, listen, all I'm saying is if I were to wake up in the middle of the night and she's there, one of us is getting knocked out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. Either, I'm either knocking her out, or I'm gonna knock myself out for trying to <laughs> swing at her. <laughs> because I would just, I would run, I would, I would run high, just yeah. I don't know. And she just like sits in the corner too. You oh know? yeah. Like, trying to see if that like, and all, oh, it's... I, before before we sign off too, I don't know if you ever got to check out, but in 2018, 2018, Warner Brothers did an event called Horror Made Here. It was a haunt. The first time they really tried to get into that business, and they did a Conjuring walkthrough, the Conjuring universe ma- uh, maze. Um, if you ever get a chance, look it up on YouTube, but they brought a lot of the iconic scenes from the Conjuring to life, uh, one of which is the painting scene from the Conjuring 2. Oh, no, I have not heard about that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. really know. I guess I kind of heard that Warner Brothers tried to do something, um, but that, oh, yeah, I'm going to check that out. Yeah, I mean... But- that could be another thing if uh, you want to expand your haunt uh, career. Uh, if they ever, I don't. They were supposed to. Come, I think they were supposed to come back this year, but they said they were going to take a year off, which was last year. And then, of course, with everything going on, I don't think they just even bothered to announce anything. Um, but hopefully, they do return because that was such a great event. I mean, one of my favorite things at that mate at that event was I'm a huge Batman fan, so mm-hmm. they had a Arkham Asylum based maze based off the video games and they had all the iconic villains um and it was just 
the, the way they did Joker, they had legit makeup and prosthetics on him, which looked beautiful. I mean, this event was just a well put together event, and I wish they would. I hope they would bring it back in the future. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna look it up now. That's yeah. another thing I'm gonna do tonight. <laughs> maybe maybe you could be the nun one year. Oh. I feel like I kind of have the face shape. <laughs> there you go. Just like, like I can do it. Just, just, just I make a chair, it. put you in a costume. It's good to go. I'm the best. Uh, being Nicole. turned into something scary like that. It's <laughs> Nicole, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to talk us with us. Us with us. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, the other puns that we get from that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, before I let you go, too, I have another person from us coming with to join me tomorrow. I don't know if you know her. Her name's Audrey. <gasps> yes, I know Audrey. Audrey's <laughs> one of my best friends. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she's going to be on the show tomorrow to talk a little bit about uh, her t experience and stuff. So I'm excited because we're doing back-to-back -back weeks of uh, scare actors. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Um, I didn't know that. She's literally one of my best friends. She's like my closest friend from the maze. Um, that's oh my awesome. God. That's so, she's amazing. You're going you're gonna to love her. She's I'm excited. I mean, and if, any of, if anyone else is watching out there that works at Horror Nights, listen, hit me up. We'll schedule something. I'm always down to interview you guys. It's fun. I have a good time. I learn a lot. A lot that I didn't know behind the scenes. I learn a lot about your guys' mazes. Nicole told me so much awesome information today that uh, that I take into uh, to mind now when I go through the mazes just to see. I love Basically, I love behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. First thing I do when I buy a new DVD, behind the scenes. So I, I really appreciate it when you guys come on and talk a little bit behind the scenes because it really makes me feel like – Everyone that works there just puts 110%. And I see that personally. And now when I talk to you guys, I see it even more. So thank you for being passionate about it. Oh, I, I love these events so much. And I, I love getting the opportunity to, to have a platform where people can talk about these events. Um, and I know this year is a very tough year for everyone. But trust me, 2021 for Horror Nights is going to come and it's going to be even better. I can guarantee you, every scare actor that works there is going to bring. 500 percent because they're gonna miss it just as much as us oh yeah <laughs> you Nicole, were 100 percent right i i hope to see you in 2021 um we'll be on the lookout for you of course we'll probably keep in contact throughout the the years and stuff so we can look out for you in the next year we'll be excited oh, i'm so excited thank you so much again Anthony. this was wonderful i'm so glad i got the chance to do this my first podcast yes best. like I, i'm so excited thank you so much no no problem we we Honestly, it was a pleasure having you on to talk uh, us again, and uh, we can't wait to do it. Hopefully down the line, maybe next year when you're on another maze, if you get in, hopefully, Beetlejuice, we're going to talk Beetlejuice. Yes, we will. <laughs> we will talk Beetlejuice because, you know, I love me some Michael Keaton, so. <laughs> uh, now, am I going to watch that movie tonight is the question. <laughs> what's up? Now it's like, should I watch that movie tonight? There you go. I mean, it's, it's a classic. It is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the Mile Sword Podcast. If you guys did enjoy this podcast, hit that like button. Uh, Nicole, are you on social media? Can anyone find you on social media? Yes, I am. It's literally just Nicole.Kasperzyk, K-A-S-P-R-Z-Y-K. You can find me, and I, I do post a lot about us in Horror Nights. Um, I think that's kind of how you guys helped find me. Um, but, yeah, I'm trying to post more about it and just my experience. And, yeah, check it out. Right. And it if you guys, first time you're hearing about Nicole through this, I mean, keep up because she, she looks like she's got a good, solid career ahead of her. Thank um, you. Yeah, we're trying to make moves. We're doing it. <laughs> we're trying, man. We're trying. We're trying to get there. It's all good. Uh, so, yeah, go follow her on her social media. Uh, definitely keep up with her. She's going to do amazing things. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Leave some nice comments down for Nicole, how much you love the Us Maze or how much you loved her performance in the Us Maze. Uh, of course, check out our merch shop. Link is in the description below. My name is Anthony from the Nights of Four. You just watched the Mindless Horror Podcast, episode 110, and I will see you guys next week.